Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Queenie, for those who don't know me, reviewing Married at First Sight Season 8, Reunion, Reunion, because we already had a reunion, but I guess they wanted to give us another one, so here we go. Before I get into it, please make sure to like this video, subscribe and hit the bell, and leave a comment down below. It is of no surprise that there's a lot of acting and pretending going on, but we're gonna talk about it anyways. So the couples who are still together are Erica and Jordan, Peggy and George, and Tasha and Paul. Are you surprised that we're here together? I'm not surprised that we made it this far, but I'm surprised how much we had to go through. We had to be this strong to get through it. We're strong enough, and I can't wait for everyone to see it. We had good times, bad times, but it just shows you that hard work pays off. We did get there in the end, didn't we? <laughs> good things come to those who wait, babe. We're doing really well, really happy. Paul! What are you doing? Yeah. You can't find love, you can't find a strong relationship and whatever does of that. I'm pretty sure I remember people in Discord talking about Tasha, not Tasha, sorry, George and Peggy having divorced after the holidays divorced after the holiday so that's done i wonder when things started to go left because at this um reunion we didn't hear much from them we didn't hear much we heard a little bit but i'm like mm. knowing now that they separated it sounds like things were already on the rocks during this filming and i think it was filmed back in november i think they should have waited don't y'all think they should have waited but it is what it is with Erica and Jordan, so shocked that they're still together. Let me check right now if they're together because there's no way. They're together. They are together. This was taken two weeks ago. Wow, wow. Okay, well. Okay, well, good for you, I guess. Good for you. Tasha and Paul. Listen, they started off being my favorite couple. And then as we know, Tasha was getting a little whoa near the end there but honestly i am happy to see them together i am happy to see that tasha has really opened up she seems to be so much more sappy now than she was before i sense the love between them of course looks can be deceiving but it's cute i'm here for it of the single people who are arriving laura single um roz thomas single Ella, Jay, they're single. They also connect on the fact that they were both dumped shortly after the show, or even on the show. Ella was dumped on the show, Jay was dumped shortly after the show. We both were the time. I love him as a friend. Me and JJ, I think, will always be in each other's lives. There is still feelings there for me. I've learned a lot about myself through the experiment. How much I've grown is major, and Luke is a big factor to that. They both credit their exes for the personal growth that they've gone through, but they speak to their exes on a regular basis. So I'm wondering to myself, like, why would we do this? I don't know. I mean, it's up to you. You can do what you want, right? But... If you acknowledge that you still have so much care and affection for this person and then you talk to them on a daily basis, I don't know how helpful that is in moving on. And a perfect example is Roz and Thomas. So they have been very cordial since their breakup. However, their communication is leaving some room for hope for Thomas. I'd be mad not to still care about her. I'm so excited for doing the party. I'm hoping Roz is there. I got my confidence back. You know, welcome to the gun show. Boom, boom, yeah. I think she wished I was like this at the beginning. So now I am my best self. Wait, how's like things like for you and like seeing was Friends, yeah. I always had a little bit of hope because I loved you two together. I'm letting Thomas take the lead on what he wants from the friendship. So if he wants to talk to me, we can. If he doesn't, like it's no hard feelings. I know he will when he wants to. Guys, can we take a second and... and... <laughs> Why does Thomas look kind of, hmm. <laughs> Why does Thomas look kind of, wow. Okay, the confidence is confidencing. It's showing, okay? I like it. He says that um, the process really helped him become more confident, have better self-esteem for himself. The person who Roz was looking for in the process seems to be the person who Thomas is now. So he's saying, you know, she's my friend, but I still have feelings for her. She's saying, 
I don't have feelings for him, but I'm going to let him. Basically, the ball is in his court, right? She's not shutting things down completely, but she also says she doesn't want to be the aggressor because that would be leading him on because she's not on the same page that he is. Why keep the communication? If you know you would be leading him on and you know he still has feelings for you, why keep the lines of communication open? I don't know. Anyways, we have um, George and Peggy who talk about being in love and they've consummated their marriage. Um, as we know, they're not together anymore, so I guess that's irrelevant. I wonder how Peggy's family feels about him now that they're not together because we know they did not approve of George, George during the show. So I wonder how they feel now. Then you have um, Erica and Jordan walking in to the reunion. The reception, not that warm. It does feel like walking into this dinner party that we kind of have a second chance just to show everyone how strong we are. We're real good, aren't we? Yeah. There's a lot going on, but we're yeah. real good. Yeah. Right. <laughs> he's got wet in the rain and then he's forgot to diffuse it. <laughs> Children in America and stayed at my house for like a month. It's just really like toxic. It drained me. They're probably great people separately, but together, I personally don't feel like it works. We did not need the insider tea from Laura to know that this couple is a train wreck. They were toxic on the show, they were toxic on the reunion, they're toxic here on the reunion of the reunion. It's mm -mm. why are y'all together? I don't understand. I really don't get it. But okay. We also have Shona who left the show with Brad, but then they broke up shortly after that. At the reunion, she met Matt. We already knew that they were together, but they're now officially telling the Mass universe that they are together. When we're at the reunion, and obviously I closed my chapter with Bradley, Matt Thank walks God. in and I'm like, all right. Sent a voice note to my friends afterwards. I was like, this guy here and I'm getting such a good vibe from him. Obviously it's not ideal having your ex and his new girlfriend in the room. Hi. I gotta be honest, they look a hell of a lot better together than they did with their original people. The only thing is Shona and Brad actually did look very suited, very well suited, but seeing her now with, um, what's his name again? I already forgot his name, Matt. <laughs> seeing her now with Matt, she seems more comfortable, more at ease. Matt is a lot more confident than he was with Adrian. And the gag is the guy who Adrian was looking for, the extroverted, confident, outspoken guy, is now who he is with Shona. Which just goes to show you, different people bring out a different side of you. And Adrian just wasn't, she just wasn't cutting it for him. But he found somebody better, so hey. There we go. The group starts to reminisce on their time on the show. A lot of people are more sour than they initially let on. As soon as Bradley was like, I never loved you, I just lusted you, like, I genuinely woke the hell up. Shona, looking back, do you, do you now actually think you were Oh, well, I did not love him at all. He was a con man. Sorry. Oh, oh I'm shots sorry. Fired. Yeah. Obviously, Matt said that um, the reason our relationship broke down was because I was insecure. And I thought it was a bit rich coming from Matt when at most commitment ceremonies, we all witnessed that I needed to give Matt more reassurance. I just think there was a point where we were trying and uh, there was just nothing coming back. But just two people that didn't work, like it's simple as that. This is fucking bullshit. I actually don't remember whose side I was on between, um, what's their name now? Matt and Adrian. All I know is I remember saying that Adrian would move the goalpost so often and it was frustrating because she would find new reasons to dislike this guy. And I'm thinking, okay, do you not want to be with him? Because what's the point? What really is the point of, you know, requiring him to do things, then he does it and then you say, oh, well, that's not the only issue. There's something else. So at first, these two are kind of butting heads, but eventually Matt thanks Adrian for the experience that they had together. It led him to Shona. So I guess all he has to do is to be thankful. And he did grow from the process. So good for them. Then the altercation between Luke and um, Jordan comes up. Luke is not here for obvious reasons. So um, Jay has to stand up in the defense of Luke since he's not here. But Jordan doesn't like that if she was a walkover. So if is a very big if. 
Why is he saying that though? Get Listen, the context so, so of that. I, I just want to say, it's because he was trying to say Jay is not a pushover. If I said to you, you 100% would not get caught if you robbed the bank and got 10 million, would you go and rob a bank? Just be quiet for one minute. One second. No, no, but just yeah, quiet but just, just... You want fuel to the fire all the time? This is why you and Luke butted heads so much, because you're both so similar. New age knows the first kid man. Are you for real? Are you for real? You say chop for a minute. Jordan cannot help but butt into other people's relationships when his own relationship is imploding in front of our eyes and he doesn't want to address it, okay? He's now taking out his anger on Erica, yeah? And she's just trying to be the peacemaker. She's just here like, okay, she's trying to plead her case, especially because the person who you're actually upset about is not in the room. Can you hear people out? Jordan wants no part. Jordan wants no part of that. And I'm thinking, if you can't ever hear somebody else's side of the story, you're gonna be very unsuccessful in life. Because it's not your way or the highway, that's not how life works. So fast forward to the dinner portion of things. They are still carrying on this animosity between them, being uh, Erica and Jordan. And again, she's trying to play peacemaker and it's just not working. I was doing that because I could see that it wasn't looking good for him to be interrupting Jay. Everyone can see that with me and Erica, for good or for bad, it's pure, genuine, raw emotions. <laughs> you don't see what we're like away from all this bullshit. I do. Go on. I've seen it all. So no please one knows give that her the... situation. You, she hasn't even spoken and you've jumped down her throat. Because we all have to hear your whine ass you... voice. Oh. He does not care. You have to hear what Jordan has to say, whether or not he's in the right. And it's so frustrating. This is childish behavior. This is a childlike mentality. When are you ever going to hear other people's opinions and take it on board? When are you ever going to accept, okay, maybe I was in the wrong about this. What your number one person, Erica, who has your best interest at heart, you are even attacking her. So Erica later on talks about him walking in, being on the defense because he thought people were gonna be against him. And now he's turning on his only ally in the room for what? Just because she's playing peacemaker does not mean she doesn't understand your perspective. She's also making you trying to understand other people's perspective so that this blow up doesn't happen. So we're going through people talking about their favorite parts of the experiment. Like I said earlier, Matt thanks Adrian for the experience, but he's glad to have fallen in love with Shona. Roz jokes about her favorite part of the process being when she left. Yikes, because what's his name is sitting right beside her. What's his name? Thomas. Thomas is sitting right beside her. So I'm sure he was a little bit hurt by that one. But she says the wedding was her actual favorite part. Then we have Ella who says that her favorite part was leaving here with friends who changed her life. The friends are Roz, Jay, and Tasha. They refer to themselves as the Spice Girls. Tasha's best memory is the final vows and everybody's cheering to the love between Tasha and Paul. It is overshadowed by Thomas's sourpuss behavior. There's a reason why you're ignoring me. Oh, it's because I had to change you and you didn't even change it. I thought you need time and space. Maybe that's why you haven't come over. I'll be honest, if I was you, the only thing I'd ask is, are you OK? Why can't we just be there for each other? So that's what I want. That's fine. OK, what I'm sorry. What do you today? Nothing. Like, obviously, yeah, it's just me. You don't owe him anything, Raj. You're just friends with him. He needs to realise you're not a couple. Why is he begging for affection from somebody who doesn't want to be with him? Again, we already know there's a lot of acting going on in this reunion, but truly, why? This is embarrassing, okay? On the show, the lady cried at the thought of having to reproduce with you. And you're crying for her affection. Crying for her affection. If you feel like she's ignoring you, you go talk to her then. She already said she's putting the ball in his court, so she was never gonna be the one to pursue him. She was never gonna seek him out. So he had to be the one taking charge. You went and sat beside her. I don't know if that seating was predetermined, but he sat beside her. He could have said something. If he felt slighted, he could have said something. To now be upset, to get up at the table, to walk away, I'm like, oh my gosh, come on. But anyways, let's move on. The Odyssey box comes out. 
Ella says that if she was to be rematched with anyone, she would pick George because he's so authentic and genuine. Thomas says that he would still take part in the experiment because it made him more confident and that's due to the relationship with Ross. Paul buys Tasha a key ring, which symbolizes that he's ready to move to Manchester with her. I did not know this man is still living at home. Why? I mean, it's only been five months since the show wrapped, but wouldn't it have been a year since the show was filmed? I don't know. I feel like we could move out, but at least he plans on moving out with Tasha. So, okay, great. Then we have Jay who says that Luke really helped her become more confident her self-esteem has improved since coming off the show and it was so good seeing her talk about this because when she talked about her bullying when she was younger you could tell she has been damaged emotionally and needed some kind of pick-me-up and it's good to know that Luke as problematic as he was helped her on that journey I hated myself at one point for a long time and I've always had my walls up can tell everybody that I do love myself now fully and wholeheartedly love myself. I'd like to be accepted for the way that you are, straight away. I don't care about the way that you look or whatever. You did a lot for me. As the reminiscing continues, we have Adrienne who talks about her favorite part of the experiment being um, meeting Erica. Jordan decides to scoff at this. Grow up! I'd say something that's so small. Why would you do that? I was smiling. No, you weren't. I was just smiling. You didn't smile, you sniggered. Yeah. Honestly, just pack your shit and go, because no one wants you here. Oh, here we go, here we go. She's embarrassed well. of you. I know full well how With she With the way that you are acting. Everyone has their opinion. Jordan, you don't have to always give your opinion, whether you're asking or not. Are you kidding? Calm the fuck down. This is fucked up. <laughs> Fucking hell. This is not normal. We're not arguing right we now. Are. Why, no, we're quiet, no, we're quiet. Both Erica and Jordan say that they've had a really good time together. Really good time. They said that they were in a good place before coming here. Erica does say that they typically have these blow ups. However, they bounce back and everything is great. So she's wondering what's happening here. They were so excited to show everybody that they're in a good place, but obviously that's not the case. Obviously not. My thing is, if these toxic blow-ups happen so frequently that you expect them to come, why are you with this person? I will say a lot of couples do stay together because of the makeup sex. Maybe that's what they're together for. Cause all that passion, all that energy just gets channeled into passion and energy. Okay. Also, why? Cause this was brought up, but I, I didn't really question it. I'm questioning it now. Why did Jordan and Erica live with Laura? Does anybody know? Why, why? Did they actually live with them or is this just for the reunion sake? Are they just saying that? Cause that's weird. Anyways, the episode ends with Shona bringing everybody outside to do some kind of fire ritual where they set free certain things and also give their hopes for the future. We have, um, Ella, who says that she is done harping on her transition. She's done keeping ties with JJ. She wants to move on as the new Ella. Love that for her. Um, some of the things were said too, I, I guess I didn't write them down, but I did note that Jordan was wishing for love. Are they not in love? Are they not together? Interesting. And I wonder if they refer to themselves as a married couple in real life, because we know Married at First Sight, UK and Australia, aren't legal marriages. It's only the States, which is insane. But yeah. Um, so are they even, are, are they just dating then? If he's wishing for love? Or is he wishing for more love? I want less love between them. I want them to break up. As Laura said, there are over 7 billion people in the world. Find you another man. Find you another man. This man can't be it. But that's the reunion. It was interesting. It was interesting. Um, I wish it was more recent because I want to know what happened between Peggy and George. We really did not get anything from them at all. And now we know that they've split. So yeah. Anyways, 
like comment share and subscribe and i will see you in the next one don't know when that will be but yeah when is the next season of married at first sight uk hasn't been confirmed well, either way, I will still be here reviewing other stuff if you care to watch those stuff as well. But uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next one.